colleagues today were here to look at the data that we're going to use to inform the implementation of our ELA reading strategies. Thank you for coming. Uh, well, let us first begin by, by looking at the rush rationale for what we're going to do. Douglas County School System's goal is to increase student achievement on the ELA reading milestones by five percentage points. Turner Middle School, we have also used that as our goal. We're trying to increase the percentage of students scoring at the developing learner or above on the Georgia milestones by at least five percentage points. We have been meeting as a data team and our data team consist of our administrators and our ELA content reading teachers and our special ed teachers who primarily are co-taught teachers. We have been meeting several times and we're look, we have looked at the strengths and weaknesses of our special education students and in particular boys. We're also focusing on boys in our observations. The data that we have analyzed three consecutive years, 2015, 2016, 2017 Georgia milestone scores of our special education students. We will also look at our right score results and we're going to look at trends and areas of weaknesses and strengths as we try to chart our goal in answering the question, how can we increase ELA reading achievement among our boys and special education population. The data that we have used to consider the changes, demographics, students and staff. I did not particularly pay much attention to uh, students who are on free and reduced lunch because those make up almost 80% of our population. So I thought it would be prudent to work on other demographical information. Uh, the student learning, we're looking at our milestones achievement in eighth grade students, special education students and our boys. We looked at student perception, that is the perception of boys um, towards reading. We looked at the processes that we have our teaching strategies and the, the deficits that our students have, the ELA reading deficits that our students have on entering eighth grade. Perception questions that were asked among 10 boys. I randomly selected 10 eighth grade boys and posed the following questions to them. What categories of reading materials did they prefer to read? Describe the different types of reading materials that they enjoy. Why did they enjoy reading those types of materials? How many pages or how long does a story have to be? Because I wanted to see if the, more, the bigger the book, the more turned off they were from reading it. And then the final question, how can teachers encourage you to read recreationally? Because it's a catch-20 situation. The more you read, the better you become. But when students don't read well, they don't like to read. So I thought that would be a, a question that could see to seek to see how what we can do as teachers to encourage them to read. What we found uh, of the ten boys, eight boys preferred fiction to enjoy nonfiction. Five of the boys enjoyed mysteries and suspense. Three enjoy reading about sports to enjoy historical fiction or science. Why did they enjoy it? The, um, the suggestions or the arguments raised from because of the suspense, the thrill, and the love of learning science and history. How many pages? Only one boy, which I was surprised. I thought more boys would like smaller books, but these boys, of the 10, only one boy preferred 100 to 150 pages. Seven of the boys liked 150 to 300, and uh, two boys like between 300 to 450. The most telling, what can teachers do to encourage you? All the boys said that they would be encouraged to read more if they were offered rewards. And I think this is an area that we can um, work on and
and strengthen in order to encourage them to read. In looking on the teacher data, you can see that Turner's eighth grade teaching staff is a diverse group. The number of years of teaching range from three years to 29 years, where the median time, teaching time spent at Turner is approximately five years. Uh, we also looked at the percentage of eighth grade students scoring in each level and each, uh, uh, each achievement level. Now, as you know, Georgia Milestones considers anything proficient and above are considered reading on grade level. Developing and beginning, those are considered not reading on grade level. So putting the chart like this was an opportunity for us to see where our deficiencies are, how many students are in this level, and how many we need to pull up as we try to strengthen uh, our reading among our students. Now, number of students scoring in each achievement level by gender. If you look here, you will see that more of our boys continue to be at the beginning level than girls. So here we have boys, almost a quarter more, 25% more of our boys are reading at the beginning level compared to our girls. However, between 2016 and 2017, you will see that the boys at the developing level were higher than the girls. However, the girls at the proficiency level and the distinguished levels were scoring better than the boys. Now, seeing that this is the area that we really try to have the least amount of students in, this is one of the areas where we need to pull our boys from. So we continue looking on by gender, and you can see the same thing here. How many boys, as opposed to girls, are reading on at each level. Looking on our ethnicity, the groups of students were categorized according to black, non-Hispanic, Hispanic, white, non-Hispanic. And as you can see, our I'm sorry, our white non-Hispanic group, uh, in terms of their proficiency, they seemingly are being more proficient in reading than the other ethnicities. However, if you notice, except for the year 2017, we had no white Hispanic students being distinguished, except in 2017, when there was a great increase. The great, it was, all, it was about 8% increase because before it was zero in the, in the previous years. Now our, F, our Hispanic students in 2017, as you can see, we had almost 50% of them were reading, or rather 50% of them were at the developing level. Now, because we're going to be looking at our special ed population, and our, uh, because we're going to be looking at our special ed population, we thought it would be wise to just look at comparatively the special education population and put those, their figures side by side with the regular education students so that we could see and, and, and have, make some analysis of the data. As you can see, 20% in 2015, 20% of our students were at the beginning level. Uh, in 2015, almost 43% were at the developing level and in 2000, uh, I'm sorry, and in, in here we have 33% at the proficiency level in 2015. So we're going to further look on to see if 
if we notice anything sticking out or striking us. If you look here, students who receive special education services and they're scoring in each achievement level. Let us look closely at what is happening. 80 and 15, 95% of our special education students were scoring or rather were not reading on grade level in 2015. And this is remarkable because when we look at the next slide, you will see that you will see the amount of students that we really had as a special education population and how many of those, if 95% are not reading on level, then how many are reading on grade level? Let us now look at the number of regular education students and special education students and their scoring in each achievement level. If you look here, you will see among, we had 31 special education students in 2015. Of that number, only one, because remember, proficiency and above is considered reading on grade level. So of that number, only one child in eighth grade who has special ed services was reading on grade level. 30 were not reading on grade level of the 31. The trend continued. In 2016, 42 special ed kids were not reading on grade level. Not one child who received special education services in 2016 was reading on grade level. There was a little improvement in 2017 where we had one student reading on grade level. But as you can see, 38 of our special education kids were not reading on grade level. So it tells us that this is an area where we have to strengthen our collaborative uh, planning sessions as well as our co-teaching methods in order to effectively reach our special education population. Now let us look at the percentage of regular education and general education students scoring in each achievement level. If you look, the red represents our special education students. Comparatively, you can see that our special education population is pulling down the numbers in terms of our kids because if you remember from previous graph, the previous graph or three slides before showed that in 2015 about 20% of our eighth grade population were at the beginning level. So if that is the case, you can see that how much the special education is affecting our growth in that area, negatively that is. Now, one of the considerations in order to implement strategies is to get a running start. So what we did was we took this year's seventh grade students and we took their Ames Web scores and we decided that the eighth grade teachers were going to look to see where our seventh grade students are because these are the kids that we will have next year. So how or what strategies are we going to implement in order to correct some of the challenges before they, so that rather we can devise strategies to intercept some of these challenges that they have. If we look here, you can see that, and as you all know, the Ames Web test is the same test that the students read or do three times a year. The only difference is that the targets are increased at each sitting. So in fall, the target was 22 words, winter the target was 25, and spring the target was 29. If you note, 
Only in fall, when the target was 22, did we meet that target. As the targets begin to rise, our students fail to meet those challenges. Looking here at or above, the same determination can be seen. You can see here that as the targets increase, the amount of students who are reading below grade level begin to fall. So in the fall, we had almost 45% um, above, but as the targets begin by spring, we had a little over 30%. So, finding the story. Based on our goal of moving our students to levels two, three, and four by five percentage points on the milestones and the data analyzed, as a team, we decided to ask ourselves the following questions. What do we do to increase the achievement of boys and our special education population? How do we ensure that our boys and our special education students learn and grow? Here is the answer. This is what we have decided to do as a team. We're going to introduce school-wide vocabulary initiative during morning announcements that will include, as our students had said they want to be rewarded, we're going to offer rewards to our students during lunch. And we're going to have a big celebration at the end of the year where kids will um, earn points and at the end of the year, we will, they will get a big reward. The ILT will implement professional learning for ELA reading teachers that incorporate the use of more short constructed responses and question and answer techniques. We believe that if the students developed or are trained in asking higher order level questions, then they will be able to answer high, higher order level questions. Our common assessments will, results will be analyzed to determine students' deficiencies and remediation needs. These we will document in our teacher da data notebooks on the shared drive. And during collaborative planning, we are going over these and we're going to look on the data, we're going to flesh out the data, we're going to identify faces, put faces with, picture, with, with numbers to see why is little boy blue not doing well? What strategies can we implement? Are the strategies working? Are the strategies not working? So over time, we will analyze how our process of using our morning vocabulary initiative, using our reading strategies, and our question and answer technique, we will also be reteaching and reassessing and assessing how, if there's any eff effect on students' performance, how are these initiatives, how are they affecting our right score, students' performance on right score and on the common district assessment data. We will also analyze to see if all students are growing. The data team will meet monthly to make adjustments to the process as needed. And that is the presentation. Do we have any questions? Thank you for your time.